You know, one of the things uh, we know that when we accept the Lord Jesus Christ, something happens. You are a new creation. The Bible says that. When you believe and accept the, whole, uh, the Lord Jesus Christ as your Lord and Saviour, the Holy Spirit comes upon you. And that was precisely what was mentioned in the book of Acts. When the disciples were waiting and the Holy Spirit came upon them and strange things began to happen. They were enabled and they had power. They had authority. Something great happened. This Holy Spirit that has been promised to every believer who accepts our Lord Jesus Christ. And today we want to hear from someone who's going to share about the personal experience of this Holy Spirit that is upon the person. Hi, good morning. My name is Ming Yin and uh, I've been given the privilege to share on my journey getting to know the Holy Spirit. Just a bit of background. I grew up afraid of ghosts and yet at the same time, I had a real problem getting to know God or believing in God simply because I couldn't see Him, I couldn't feel Him and I couldn't touch Him. And when people used to tell me about miracles in their lives or, or miraculous healings in their lives by God, I would be very doubtful. I would be extremely skeptical. But eventually, by God's grace, I became a Christian. Now, when I became a Christian, I didn't have any problems having a relationship with God the Father because I had a lovely um, earthly father who was very close to. I didn't have a problem getting to know the Lord Jesus and having a relationship with Him because I had a very lovely earthly brother whom I was very close to as well. But when it came to the Holy Spirit, um, I really had a problem there. I, uh, yeah, and on top of that, he's sometimes referred to as the Holy Ghost. So I really didn't know how to have a, <coughs> excuse me, a relationship with a spirit or a ghost. All right, but God eventually took me to a Bible college. And this was when I've, I was only a two-year-old committed Christian. So I learned a lot of the Bible at that college. And I learned a lot about the Holy Spirit. But it was, a lot of it was head knowledge. But God was beginning to encourage me to have a relationship with the Holy Spirit. So God put me in the same housing unit as a young lady who used to start her prayers this way, Dear Holy Spirit. And I used to think, who starts a prayer with Dear Holy Spirit? You know, you would say Dear Heavenly Father or Dear Lord Jesus, but Dear Holy Spirit, that's a bit out there. But this young lady also um, had the gift of prophecy. And through her, I began to see what it looked like for someone who was sensitive to the leading of the Holy Spirit and who had a relationship with the Holy Spirit. After college, I started in a ministry with the Orang Asli. In the Orang Asli ministry, um, miraculous healings and deliverance from demonic forces was happening a lot and not only was I witness to these things uh, but I also was um, eventually uh, made to be a part of this. So my, my relationship with the Holy Spirit began to grow um, but it's not only one way. It's not in any relationship. It's it's never one way. So God would would actually um, yeah encourage in that relationship. But I too had to cultivate that relationship with the Holy Spirit. Um, and now I understand why it was so important as well. Because I'm now involved in a ministry called pastoral care. I won't go into that because of uh, time constraint, 
but it involves inner healing, it involves um, physical healing, it also involves um, deliverance as well. Uh, it's just a part of that because what's happening is, is the Holy Spirit is, is actually freeing and making that person whole through that ministry. And so, um, and on, on, top, on top of that, uh, getting to know the Holy Spirit was very special as well when I lost my earthly father because um, he was really my comforter at that time. Um, he was really my counsellor. So getting, so I urge all of us to really get to know all three members of the Trinity if we don't already. Because um, each member of the, the Trinity brings a different uh, relationship to us, even as we would connect with our earthly fathers differently from how we would connect to our earthly brothers or our bridegroom. Um, so similarly, yeah, uh, it's been wonderful to get to know God the Father, God the Son, who's, who's my brother, my bridegroom, and also the Holy Spirit, who is the counsellor uh, that Jesus has sent to us, who is the comforter. And more than that, He's also the giver of gifts the empowering one. So I, I, yeah, so I urge you to do this and thank you for listening. That was a wonderful testimony. And one of the things about testimony is that it encourages, it builds us. And uh, we allow the Spirit, the Holy Spirit to work in us and great things begin to happen. Today we want to continue in worshipping our God and learning from the Word of God. And uh, we have our very own Brother Aaron Tam, to speak to us from the passage of Acts 2, from verses 1 to 41. Let's welcome Brother Aaron Tam. Good morning to you. Thank you for tuning in. Welcome to SSGC and to SSGC family. We hope that after the CMCO, when the church reopens, you will come and visit us. We are very easy to find, SS2 uh, stroke 103, where you find good food as our neighbour and warm fellowship in the SSGC Family Church. Today is Pentecost Sunday, where we remember God the Father fulfilling the promise to send His Holy Spirit to come upon us, His believers. Let's read the passage today, uh, from, taken from Acts chapter 2, verse 1 to verse 41. When the day of Pentecost arrived, they were all together in one place, and suddenly there came from heaven a sound like the mighty rushing wind and it filled the entire house where they were sitting, and divided tongues as of fire appeared to them, and rested on each of them. And they were all filled with the Holy Spirit, and began to speak in other tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance. Now they were dwelling in Jerusalem, Jews, devout men from every nation under heaven. And as this sound, the multitude came together, and they were bewildered, because each one was hearing them speak in their own language. And they were amazed and astonished, saying, Are not all these who are speaking Galilean? And how is it that we hear each of them in his own native language? Parthians and Medians and Elamites and residents of Mesopotamia, Judea and Cappadocia, Pontus and Asia, Phrygia and Pamphylia, Egypt and parts of Libya belonging to Cyrene, and visitors from Rome, both Jews and the proselytes, Cretans and Arabians, we hear them telling in our own tongues the mighty works of God. And all were amazed and perplexed, saying to each other, What does this mean? But others mocking said, They are filled with new wine. But Peter, standing with the eleven, lifted up his voice and addressed the men of Judea and all who dwell in Jerusalem, Let this be known to you and give years to my words. For these men are not drunk, as you suppose, since it is only the third hour of the day. But this is what was uttered to the prophet Joel. And in the last day it shall be, God declares, that I will pour out my Spirit on all flesh, and your sons and your daughters shall prophesy, and your young men shall see visions, and your old men shall dream dreams, and even on my male servant and female servants. In those days I will pour out my Spirit, and they shall prophesy. And I will show wonders in the heavens above, and signs on the earth below, blood and fire, and vapour of smoke. 
the sun shall be turned to darkness and the moon to blood before the day of the Lord comes, the great and magnificent day. And it shall come to pass that everyone who calls upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Verse 22, men of Israel, hear these words. Jesus of Nazareth, a man attested to God, to you by God, with mighty works and wonders and signs that God did through him in your midst, as you yourself know. This Jesus delivered uh, up according to the definite plan and foreknowledge of God. You crucified and killed by hands of lawless men. God raised him up, losing, losing the pangs of death because it was not possible for him to be held by it. For David says concerning him, I saw the Lord always before me, for he is at my right hand, that I may not be shaken. Therefore my heart was glad, and my tongues rejoiced. My flesh also will dwell in hope, for you will not abandon my soul to Hades, for, or let your Holy One see corruption. You have made known to me the path of life. You will make me full of gladness with your presence. Brothers, I may say to you with confidence about the patriarch David that he both died and was buried, and his tomb is with us to this day. Being therefore a prophet and knowing that God has sworn, sworn with an oath to him that he would set one of his descendants on his throne, he foresaw and spoke about the resurrection of the Christ, that he was not abandoned to Hades, nor did his flesh see corruption. This Jesus God raised up, and for that we all are witnesses, being therefore exalted at the right hand of God and having received from the Father the promise of the Holy Spirit, He has poured out this that you yourself are seeing and hearing. For David did not ascend into the heavens, but he himself said, The Lord said to my Lord, Sit at my right hand until I have your enemies your footstool. Let all the house of Israel therefore know for certain that God had made him both Lord and Christ, this Jesus whom you crucified. Now when they heard this, they were cut to the heart and said to Peter and the rest of the apostles, Brothers, what shall we do? And Peter said to them, Repent and be baptized every one of you in the name of Jesus Christ for the forgiveness of your sin, and you will receive the gift of the Holy Spirit, for the promise is for you and for your children and for all who are far off, everyone whom the Lord our God calls to himself. And with many other words he bore witness and continued to exhort them, saying, Save yourself from this crooked generation. So those who received this word were baptized, and they were added that day about 3,000 souls. May the Lord add his richest blessing to the reading of his word. Would you pray with me? Father, may the words I share, the thoughts and the meditation of my heart and mind be acceptable to you, O Lord, and all be to your glory and honour. 2,000 years ago, in the first Pentecost, when the Holy Spirit came upon the believers, He came, there was a whirlwind of storm, as though it was strong wind. And then came a fire from heaven and it broke out into tongues of fire and rested upon each of the disciples. I have a picture here where it shows the fire coming upon each of the disciples. And really, when the Holy Spirit came, it really to take the gospel for one purpose, to the ends of the earth. I thought this picture was so appropriate that the earth has been set on fire for our Lord and Saviour. In the last passage that we look at Jesus' ascension, he told the disciples to go back to Jerusalem and wait, wait for the Father to fulfill his promise to send the Holy Spirit. And in, in Acts chapter 1, verse 4 and 5, it says it's about the fulfillment of the promise of the Holy Spirit is coming to reality. Throughout the time when Jesus was with his disciples, he kept telling them that the Father will send the Comforter that he must go, that the Comforter can come. In Luke chapter 11, verse 13, Jesus said, If you then, being evil, know how to give good gifts to your children, how much more will your heavenly Father give the Holy Spirit to those of you who ask? As a confirmation of God giving us the Holy Spirit, Luke chapter 24, verse 49, Jesus said, 
that they will be clothed with power from on high when the Holy Spirit come upon them. Implying that when the Holy Spirit come, we will be empowered, we will be enabled, and there are many things that we will be doing. And he said, far more than what I've done, you will be doing. And in John's Gospel, he mentioned four times on this promise that the Father will send the Holy Spirit, out of which three of them were mentioned during Jesus' private last moment with his disciples at the Passover feast, where he said, I must go so that he can come, and the Father will send the Holy Spirit to you. And this can be found in John chapter 7, verse 39, John chapter 14, verse 16 and 26, John chapter 15, verse 26, and John 16, 7, uh, verse 7. I won't read them, but do find them for yourself and read them. <coughs> Three of these passages quoted uh, by Jesus to his disciples at the time and the last supper with them. If you remember the incident when Jesus was raised from the dead, he, he appeared to his disciples in the room where they were gathered, in the upper room. When Jesus came in, this time was when Thomas was not there. Jesus breathed unto them, in, recorded in John chapter 20, verse 22. When he had said this, he breathed on them to receive the Holy Spirit. It was as though to prepare them for the time when the Holy Spirit will come upon them. In the 10 days they were waiting after the uh, ascension of our Lord Jesus, the disciples in the 10 days decided to fast and pray and spend a lot of time praying together. And they also selected another disciple to replace Judas Iscariot. And they cast lot and it fell upon Matthias. Why I want to mention this? Because the casting of lot was, was a common practice in the Old Testament days. You see in Leviticus chapter 16, verse 8 uh, to 10, or Joshua chapter 7, verse 14, and Proverbs 18, verse 18. And in this incident, in the Acts recorded, would be the last time they would use the casting of lots in the selection of anything. And in this case, selected Matthias. Because now we have the Holy Spirit, we do not need to cast lot anymore. We can pray and discern. We can be guided by the Holy Spirit. Or in certain circumstances, hear Him speak into our lives. So the moment has arrived that the fulfilling of the Father's promise of the Holy Spirit, He came like a tongue of fire, and the fire divided and rested upon each of them. Let us take a look at what was foretold long ago about the Holy Spirit and what was expected of the Holy Spirit to do with the disciples. I have divided the passage into three headings, the first one being from verse 1 to verse 4, the presence of the Holy Spirit, the infilling. Verse 5 to verse 13, the power of the Holy Spirit, the empowerment. And the third is verse 14 to 41, the purpose of the Holy Spirit, the mission. Let's take a look at the first uh, passage. From verse 1 to verse 14, verse 4, the infilling. We look at the passage earlier, uh, and in the earlier message, Jesus' ascension a couple of weeks ago. So I will briefly summarize this. The outpouring of the Holy Spirit in this chapter can be remembered by the abbreviation CBF. C is the completion of Christ's ministry on earth. B is the beginning of the work of the Holy Spirit. And F, the formation of his body and his church. Jesus was exalted to the right hand of God. As the Father has promised to send the Holy Spirit, he poured forth the Holy Spirit upon his disciples. Pentecost, as I mentioned, uh, is, it means the 50th day because it took place on the 50th day after the Passover before Jesus was crucified on the cross. And on that day, the Jews celebrated the barley harvest or the wheat harvest. If you remember Renee's message on Mother's Day, the day Ruth and Naomi arrived at Bethlehem, it was the beginning of the barley harvest. The festival is usually around the mid or end of April. Barley harvest or wheat harvest is the first cutting of the crops for the harvest and they will be brought into the store. And the first fruit was made into bread and the offering to the Lord at the completion of the harvest. 
well, if you put it another way, it's like a celebration and thanksgiving. Looking back into history, the Jewish people, nothing is left to chance. God had it all planned and everything that took place is in divine order. In Leviticus chapter 23, verse 15 to 17, this is about 1,500 years before Christ came. The harvest or the first fruit, or as I mentioned earlier, it fell on the 50th day, the first day of harvest. It was to celebrate the end of the harvesting season. It becomes as an offering to God for His blessings. It was also a day to remember the day where God gave the law to Moses on Mount Sinai. So instead of the first day of harvest, it became the day of the first Passover in Egypt and the day when the, when the law was given by God. And 2,000 years ago, where God sent His Holy Spirit to come upon His disciples, it happened on the day of Pentecost. And it becomes a day where the Messianic Jews will celebrate the day when God sent His Holy Spirit and to fulfill His promise. And so do we. We celebrate the same uh, Pentecost day when the Holy Spirit was sent upon each of the believers. So CBF, C is the completion of Christ's ministry on earth. B, the beginning of the work of the Holy Spirit. And F, the formation of His body and his church. The Holy Spirit was sent for one purpose, which is to proclaim Jesus is Lord and Messiah and to share the gospel and to reach as many uh, believers as possible. The message alone on that day in the first Pentecost pierced the heart of those listening on the first day when the Holy Spirit came upon uh, each one of them. In a nutshell, that is the gospel for us to proclaim to speak into the heart of individual who have yet to know our Lord Jesus. But I must also add on the Pentecost day. When the Holy Spirit came, it was the beginning of the last milestone for our journey, journey on earth. Because the next milestone when we arrive, it will be the return of our Lord Jesus Christ. We are on our last journey. We are on our last run, the last lap. You and I are expected to finish it well and to complete our run. The Father has given us the Holy Spirit. We will be able to run the best race, the, run the best marathon that we can run. In these last days, is the fulfilling, fulfillment of the prophecy in Joel chapter 2, verse 28 to 32, which was quoted by Peter in verse 17 to 21. Let me just read the first verse to you. And in the last days, it shall be... God declares that I will pour out my spirit on all flesh and your sons and daughters shall prophesy and your young men shall see vision and your old men shall dream dreams. The Holy Spirit will be poured forth onto each of us, his believers. In Isaiah chapter 32, verse 15, it says, Until the Spirit is poured out upon us from on high and the wilderness become a fertile field, and the fertile field is considered as a forest. When Isaiah, Isaiah was saying that it was in reference to verse 1 and 2 of that same chapter in Isaiah, that the king will reign righteously, referring to the time when the Holy Spirit is poured forth, it will begin the formation of the kingdom of God that will finally be ruled by our Messiah, King Jesus. We have no excuse for not finishing well. The Holy Spirit is in us. It has been given. He empowers, He enables, He helps us to minister, to reach out to people in need. So let Him lead us. Let Him guide us. And we will see wonders being done. Let's consider the second point. The outburst in tongues was the first gift the Holy Spirit enabled the disciples to have that gift. And it's the most appropriate gift. Why do I say that? You have 2.5 million people gathered in Jerusalem for the Passover feast. As I quoted earlier from Josephus, that the historian who estimated that if one sacrificial lamb or animal was for 10 people, he estimated that there were 250,000 animals were sacrificed at each of the Passover. 
So therefore, there are 2.5 million people gathered in Jerusalem over the Passover feast and festival. That is a whole lot of people. With so many people from each of the, from the region, they all came. And all 15 or 16 type of people were only mentioned in Acts. But I am sure there were more. The disciples broke out in tongues, languages to speak to the least listeners and they shared the good news to those who were listening. This is the main mission of the Holy Spirit. You would have also heard before that in this Pentecost was also different from the previous celebration because the Holy Spirit was sent and the people spoke in tongues. It was as though God brought the closure in Jesus Christ. The, at the Tower of Babel, when God scattered the people with different languages, this is to regather them to the understanding of his message. I remember reading a commentary, and that is... Uh, in, in actual fact, Judaism itself, it says, was God's plan to bring all people together. If Josephus was right already, we had 2.5 million people from that region gathered in Jerusalem. That is indeed God bringing people into Jerusalem to worship him. It really was the beginning of the word of, uh, word of God, going out from Jerusalem to Judea, Samaria, and then to the uttermost part of the earth. The Holy Spirit coming is really the first time of the, the fall of man at the Garden of Eden where God has distanced himself from us because of our sin. And in Christ, to what he has done at the cross, in him we have been made righteous and acceptable before God. So when the Holy Spirit come upon us, it is God with us and living in us. God has nullified the effects of Eden and Babel by the redeeming work of our Savior, perfect sacrificial Lamb of God. Those hearers in Jerusalem were touched by the Holy Spirit and were convicted and pierced in their hearts. And they wanted to believe and they asked, what shall we do? In sharing the good news, it is never you or me who will persuade or convict the people. It is the Holy Spirit work to convict them. And at this, the people's heart were pierced. On the matter of tongues, in my simple and humble understanding, the tongue in this passage is different from what Paul mentioned in 1 Corinthians chapter 12, 13 and 14, which I personally do use for self-edification my personal moment in prayer and time with God. It is usually not for others. If it is, I know God will give me an interpretation or someone who can understand the tongues that he has given me. But in most cases, it's for my personal prayer. But my personal prayer to God is, God will give me gifts of healing, working miracles and giving, which I can reach out to more people for the Lord. The tongue at the other end is for my own edification and prayer. If you are in fear whether it is of the Holy Spirit, just remember this. Only the Holy Spirit will declare Jesus is Lord. As Paul says in 1 Corinthians chapter 12, verse 3, Therefore I make known to you that no one speaking by the Spirit of God says Jesus is accursed. No one can say Jesus is Lord except by the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit empowers the Holy Spirit enables and the Holy Spirit will lead us. Let's take us to uh, point number three, the purpose of the Holy Spirit, which is the mission. The sole purpose of the Holy Spirit coming upon the believer is to proclaim the gospel, to tell the whole world that Christ has died on the cross for each one of us, but he was raised from the dead and he is now seated at the right hand of the Father. When the Spirit came upon each of them, they began to speak the mighty works of God. What is the mighty works of God, you might ask? The mighty works of God is the salvation in Christ Jesus our Lord, whom God has sent to die for each of us. A long time ago, Henry Martin said, he was the author of journal um, and letters from the year 1700s to 1800. He was also an Anglican priest and missionary. And he said, the spirit of Christ is the spirit of mission. The nearer we get to him with the Holy Spirit, the more intently missionary we must become. Let me repeat that. 
The spirit of Christ is the spirit of mission. The nearer we get to him, the more intently missionary we must become. And if I may add, the most wonderful thing for me is when the Holy Spirit came upon me, I have the assurance that now I'm a child of God, that in Christ Jesus, I am acceptable by my heavenly Father, which is such a marvelous and wonderful news for me. Then Peter stood up in verse 14 and 16. And Peter says, standing with the eleven, lifted up his voice and addressed them. Men of Judea and all who dwell in Jerusalem, let this be known to you and give ear to my words, for these people are not drunk, as you suppose, since it is only the third hour of the day. But this is what was uttered through the prophet Joel, that this will happen, that the Holy Spirit will come. I believe on the day when Peter stood up and spoke, all the others 119 disciples spoke the same message in different languages at the same time, as though it was interpreting but the Holy Spirit and power. Could you picture that? Speaking to the many listeners right at the same time. The mighty work of God. The Holy Spirit proclaiming the gospel through the disciples of all who were listening. Every tongue and tribe represented there that day could understand could, and understood the mighty work of God. In conclusion, the Pentecost experience 2,000 years ago was really a time of God fulfilling His promises to His people. The book of Acts is really a narrative unfolding the move of the Holy Spirit and how He directs and empowers the believers to take the gospel from Jerusalem, Judea and Samaria and to the four corners of the earth. The basic target is our local community. How the Spirit fills believers were sent into the mission field and touched the hearts of the listeners. You and I must continue this mission. We must allow the Holy Spirit to work through us as this is the last journey on earth. Let us run with gusto. Let us run for the Lord and proclaim the gospel. Someone says, Luke puts it so well that he suggested you should be built up with the Spirit, walk in the fear of the Lord and in the comfort of the Holy Spirit. For we cannot keep the mighty work of God just to ourselves. We must share it. Henry Martin also said, I have, right, I have rightfully no other business each day but to do God's work as a servant, constantly regarding His pleasure. So really, if there's nothing for us else to consider, it is to consider doing the mission work, sharing the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ. If it's the first time you are hearing this, I pray that the Holy Spirit will touch your heart, pierce your heart, that you will come to the saving knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ. And if you have done that, call us, let us know, so that we in our church can journey with you in your new found faith. Thank you for listening and we hope that you will join us uh, in our church when we reopen uh, the church so thank you very much and thank you for listening in. God bless you. Amen. We thank God for the promised Holy Spirit that has been given to every one of us who believe and trusted in our Lord Jesus Christ. And it is this Holy Spirit that empowers you and I to move forward. Even through the pandemic, the Holy Spirit is with you and is with me. I just want to end today by saying, may the God of hope Fill you with all joy and peace as you trust in Him, so that you may overflow with hope by the power of the Holy Spirit. If you are new here and you've got a prayer request, we would love to pray with you. Or if you are, you have a testimony that you would like to share with us, we would love to hear from you too. Please click to the, on the link in the description below to connect with us. May the Lord bless you and keep you. Have a good week.